Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So by request, here is a review for The Car. It's a 1977 film and it is currently available on Shudder. When this video is going up, I watched it today. Uh, although I believe I saw a tweet by Shudder saying that it's coming off at the end of this week, I think. So I think Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, I don't know. So when, when you see this, because this is a no spoilers review, when you see this and you say, oh, you know, that sounds like a film I would like to uh, watch, if that is the case, then get on it immediately because I don't know when it's leaving. Uh, all indications would be soon. So, uh, up front, would I recommend seeing this film? Yes. I would recommend seeing it at least once for people who are horror fans, especially if you like kind of like a less serious, not scary, kind of campy-ish horror uh, and then I'll describe a little bit more without spoilers, and if that sounds really good to you, you should definitely check it out. For me personally, I'm glad I watched it once. I had interest in this film. I don't know if it's a film I would watch a second time, but I think it'd be more of like a am I in the right mood type of thing. Like if I had a buddy came who came over and he was like, oh, I've been really wanting to watch the car, I'd probably be like, I could watch that with you right now. That'd be fine, but I'm not going to watch it on my own, I don't think. Share it with other people, fine. Uh, so a few things. One, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the car being possessed. That's not really a spoiler. You know, just the little synopsis of it is basically a demonically possessed car is terrorizing a town. There's, like, that's it. Like, there's there's no, like, plot development. There's no plot really at all. Like, that's it. So <laughs> really, it's like what you get is what you get. Uh, it's very, very simplistic, but... If you like what's in it, it's a fun time, to be honest. So, And, and it's kind of like, the way I was thinking about it while I was watching it is like, this is a slightly more violent version of the TV show The Dukes of Hazard, Because there's a lot of, obviously, car tricks going on when the, when the big bad is actually a car, a car that's not driven by anyone, then obviously there's going to be a lot of like car tricks going on. So it's very much like The Dukes of Hazard, but a little bit more violence. Uh, one of the weird things to me, like two things kind of struck me in the very beginning of the film. One thing, they start the film off with a, a quote from Anton LaVey, who I don't know if people know, but he was like the guy who started the Church of Satan, I believe. Um, so it was just kind of weird. I mean, it, it fits in a sense, but it was just a really weird thing to have like right up front. Um, the other thing is the music is over the top. Like the mu music's over the top. It, um, you don't feel it that way as much as the film goes on, but very be in the very beginning when it's just rolling like the opening credits, it is just like, dun, 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 and you're just like, can we calm this down? Can we mellow out just for a minute? But uh, then it gets interesting and fun. And I will say that this, this is an instance of kind of diminishing returns as the film goes on for the most part. There are a few things that I think are really good towards the end, but for the most part, the most fun is in the beginning 30 to 45 minutes, maybe, in my opinion. And, and then it hits a section where there's a, this big lull, kind of, where it gets kind of boring. Because a lot of the shots are kind of long. A lot of the scenes are kind of, like, very much stretched out to meet, like, about an hour and a half runtime. Uh, because the thing is, you can tell they're trying to do this on a small budget. And with having to have, you know, a bunch of, like, car tricks and, you know, stuff like that in it. Uh, they're trying to minimize that, like do them where they needed to, but minimize it for the most part and get that hour and a half runtime. So they have a lot of dialogue and a lot of people kind of taking their time in scenes. Also, it was, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, like they took their time with stuff more anyway. So that's just kind of how it is. Uh, I have a few notes, so I just want to make sure I go through those. Just kind of put them in my phone as I was going on. Um, for me personally, when I started watching it, I, I didn't know if it was going to be a film that actually tries to scare you or like get some real tension going on or if it's a little less serious oh there goes my cat she didn't like the movie as you can hear her yelling um so i didn't know what 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 angle they were coming from basically and you'll you'll kind of get early on that you're not going to be able to take it very seriously because the the kill scenes are kind of ridiculous and there there's no like showing it up up close type thing like there's no blood and guts or anything like that uh it's kind of just like pretty hokey in a sense but there's some fun to be had with that some of them are like so hokey that you just kind of laugh and you're just like oh my god some are just kind of like fun hokey you know it's there are good things i will say you know for the most part i kind of i had written down the deaths in this suck 
because they're not great. Like you're not going to get good gore gags or anything like that. But there actually were like two moments involving some deaths that I was like, they really went for it right there. And and those were things that were more uh, going higher on the budget for that moment to get better, you know, kind of car tricks, uh, which, like I said, you know, they try to keep it low budget, obviously, so there's not a lot of that. But in those two instances in particular, which are towards the end of the film, probably within the last 30 minutes around there, um, those were actually really cool. I, I kind of like perked up during those and I was just like, oh, that was kind of impressive, kind of cool. I, I enjoyed it. So uh, that was really good. There are some really wacky characters in this. And that's one of the greatest things about the beginning, like half hour of the film is being introduced to these really wacky, weird characters who have some really like, I don't know, like some, some dialogue that just seems weird for the movie, but it's quirky and oddly satisfying uh the the dialogue with these people it seems like some of it may have very well been improv too there's some there's some really quotable stuff in this i'm not going to throw out too many of them because if you're going to watch it you should definitely you know just come upon a lot of those on your own and uh you can definitely quote it afterwards because it's some quotable stuff but i had written one of them down when i was like there's some wacky characters in here there's this one where this guy's like I just, I, this is the actual quote. I just, I just don't think you ought to be hitting that lady. And a guy's response is, that's my wife. This guy literally like beating this woman and the guy's like, I don't think you ought to be hitting that lady. He's like, well, that's my wife. Like, you see what I mean? Like it's weird, <laughs> kind of weird out there dialogue. And there's this like segment. Actually, I was going to say, there's a segment where they, where they spend a little too much time on some dude's French horn, but actually in general, Someone involved with this film who's very influential had, has a real big thing about brass instruments that you'll see when you watch this, which, you know, it just fits in with the quirkiness of the film itself. Um, but I think that the characters, the quirkiness of a lot of these characters and the introduction of them in the beginning is really what sucks you in and makes you interested. And it's not, it's not like it's very horror driven, to be honest. It's just like quirky, weird characters. It's just enjoyable for me. It's different. I don't like it to the same degree, but for me, that kind of like quirky character aspect, making it interesting, kind of similar to the, my feelings with the the original Twin Peaks series. Like I, the well, at least when you get past the first season, the first season had like thriller aspect, mystery aspects to it, but the second season was just all like, you watch it because you like the quirky characters, and I really did, and it's kind of that type of, you know, quirky character interest level. So, um. I already said it reminds me of the Dukes of Hazard. Oh, they did a pretty good job with the way they shot the close-ups of the car to convey that it's alive, that it's kind of its own entity, its own beast. Um, so I thought that really kind of like carried it through well. There, there are some ways they could have done it where you're just like, this doesn't even seem like the thing's alive. But I thought with their camera angles that they used and how close up they got, they, they made it feel like the car was alive and trying to kill people, which was pretty cool. Um, and, yep, you can just packed it with dialogue, pack this thing with dialogue because they're trying to keep that really, really low budget. Uh, but, and yeah, like I said, um, the very end, there are a few really good death scenes and, um, like the end end is, is a fun conclusion in my opinion. There's probably way more action towards the end of it than there is the rest of the film. Maybe in the last like 15, 20 minutes, there's more action than everywhere else. So, um. I guess maybe that's when they were like, okay, now we can spend a little bit more money because we still have, you know, this amount left. Uh, and the last note I had on this before I just shut this down because I don't want don't want it to go extremely long because I'm not even talking about spoilers, really. Um, watching this film made me want to go watch the film Rubber. Now, if you haven't seen the film Rubber, it's actually an awesome film. It's basically about a, uh, a live tire, yes, a live rubber tire that can destroy things with telekinesis. Sounds stupid, sounds like it's a terrible movie, but honestly, there's more going on than you think in it, and it is a brilliant film, and watching The Car really made me want to watch Rubber. So if people want to do their own double feature, I would recommend watch The Car and then watch Rubber, because you got one that's kind of like a hokey, fun, quirky, 
whatever film, and then you have Rubber, which is also weird and quirky, but um, a really good, like, well-done film. So, anyway, hopefully people really enjoyed this. Why don't you go ahead and put some comments down there. Let me know, did you see the car? Are you going to see the car? Your thoughts, good, bad, whatever. Hit that subscribe, please. It really helps out. Literally takes you, like, a second. Very painless but it can mean a lot for me. And if you see anything that you like on this channel, you can just pay me back by hitting that subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell so you uh, will know anytime I put up a video. I wanna keep doing these request ones, basically, uh, especially when it relates to films on Shutter because I'm very passionate about Shutter. I don't have anything to do with the company or anything. I'm just very passionate about it. So keep throwing out recommendations, put it in the comments. I'm also gonna be doing some polls on Facebook in the Joe Bob Briggs uh, Drive-In Mutants group. Uh, to see if there are people in there who really want uh, have films that they they have interest in on Shutter but don't want to put the time in um, at first, so someone like me could just watch them real quick and do a quick you know review. You can watch this like ten minute plus review and then say based on that I do or I do not want to spend my time watching this film. So hopefully this helped out. Uh, thank you everyone for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.